for the 1990 murder of her husband, Greg Smart. Pamela Smart has a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. She was found to be an accomplice to first degree murder. And for some reason in, a, in New Hampshire, accomplice to first degree murder has only death penalty or life without parole as possible sentences. Now, everybody who actually committed the murder are out and they've been out for many years including Billy Flynn, who shot Greg Smart while he begged for his life, including Patrick Randall, who held a knife on a man who had never done him any wrong and ignored his pleas for mercy. Okay? Now, let's put um, Pam Smart's sentence in a little perspective, shall we? Leslie Van Hooten is paroled, and she was involved in the La Bianca murders, um, two of basically the most famous, infamous, horrible murders in American history. Gertrude Banaszewski, for the torture slaying of a 16-year-old girl, was tortured every day for a period of months, was paroled after 20 years. Brian Grossberg and Amy Peterson smashed in the skull of their newborn son. She served two and a half years in prison and he served two. Melissa, the prom mom, Drexler, gave birth to a child in a high school bathroom, strangled him, and then went back to dance at the prom and she was out in less than four years. Is it a little disproportionate? I cannot, for the life of me, understand why, when you, you know, consider these other cases and many others like them, of people who committed horrible offenses, gaspingly horrible offenses, and were paroled, why it is that Pamela Smart generates such hatred. You know, white people just seem to have it, so many people just seem to have it in for her. And why they, you know, assume that she could not, in over 30 years time, possibly mend her ways. Okay? I just want to put that out there, that that hatred for one accomplice to murder is very, very disproportionate. Okay, and her sentence is very different. Okay.